For our last example, we're going to do something very similar to the previous example. We're going to have something um, that is rotating. We're going to shoot something into that rotating object and ask what its speed is after we shoot something into it. Um, so in this case, the merry-go-round or the um, wheel is rotating to begin with. They tell us its radius, its moment of inertia, and its initial rotation speed. And then we're going to have a child jump on and add mass to this, which we know makes it harder to rotate. It's going to increase its moment of inertia, and we're going to look to see what the new angular speed is going to be. So the information that we're given is the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round, the radius of the merry-go-round, 2 meters, its initial angular speed in revolutions per minute. So of course we're going to need to change that to radians per second. And if we have 10 revolutions per minute, we can rote, uh, change this by looking at 2, excuse me, 2 pi radians per revolution, and then 1 minute is 60 seconds. And that's the conversion I've done here. It looks like we're going to need to take 10 and multiply it by 2 pi, divide by 60, and we'll get 1.05 radians per second. And we're told the mass of the child. Um, this is a collision problem. We have an inelastic collision, two objects joined together at the end. We know energy is not conserved, however momentum is. And in this case, angular momentum. Linear momentum would be conserved if the center of mass of the playground merry-go-round was free to move. But again, we're holding this in place. It is only free to rotate. So angular momentum is conserved. Um, in our last problem, where we had something jumping and landing on our circle at a distance from the pivot point, we had some initial angular momentum from the object. In this case, we don't. And the question is why? And if we look to see how the child is jumping on, they're jumping straight towards the center of mass um, and about the rotation point. So in this case, there's no lever arm. So they have no initial mo momentum to begin with, no angular momentum. If we tried to take MVR, the R in this case would be zero because they are in fact landing on or going towards that pivot point. So the only thing that has angular momentum to begin with is the merry-go-round and it's going to be rotating, in this case, clockwise. And then at the end, we have two things that are going to be rotating clockwise, the child um, and the merry-go-round together at some final speed. And of course, we're going to have to calculate the moment of inertia of the child by treating the child as a point mass that is a distance r away from the axis of rotation. So we can think of that child rotating around. So to solve for omega final, it's going to be I of the merry-go-round, MGR, times its initial speed, divide by the new moments of inertia. And that's two things now rotating instead of one. So the I of the merry-go-round was given as 250. Um, the initial speed was given as 1.05 radians per second. The I of the merry-go-round again is 250, and now we're having to add the I for the child, and that's going to be the child's mass times the radius squared. And the radius was 2, so 2 squared. Um, so it looks like we're adding 100. And if we put that in our calculator to find out what the new speed is, it slows down to 0.75 radians per second. So with the added mass, the added inertia, this now goes at a slower rate. This is completely analogous to the problem that we had done when we looked at linear motion, conservation of linear motion, and we had something that was free to move in the x direction, and we dropped something in. And now the only thing that that's did was add mass. So when we looked at the picture a little bit later, it now had more inertia, more mass, and it was going at a slower speed. And that's exactly what's happened here. We started with something that was turning fairly fast. We added more inertia. We put a mass acting at a distance um, from the uh, axis rotation point. And that additional inertia is going to make it slow down. So we can think of at the beginning, this had a high speed and not much inertia. And at the end, two things rotating. So more inertia, 
the child and the merry-go-round, and that's going to make a slower speed. So our last example for conservation of angular momentum, and now when we start looking at the practice problems for chapter 11, um, you're going to see some where we now have the center of mass moving as well.